welcome to another episode of the Learn Recruiter Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Clementson, and if you're a recruiter out on your own or just lacking general advice or mentorship, you've come to the right place. Our episodes are designed to give you the motivation, the strategies, and the support you need to become the very best Learn Recruiter. So join us, grab a cup of coffee, and let's take your desk to another level. Now, last week, I'm doing, uh, last week I was at Engage 2024, which is run by Bullhorn, and I'm doing a few episodes this week. Um, on my key takeaways. Now, this one was super bloody interesting because Bullhorn surveyed thousands and thousands of people, both recruiters and talent or job seekers, and they wanted to find out what motivated talent to use a recruiter. Quick break. We had an overwhelming response to episode 86, which was the 2024 recruitment desk planning. Now, a ton of people reached out and asked if we could help them. We can't get to everyone, but it got me thinking. I don't normally do this, but due to the response, I've decided to open up a limited amount of one-on-one coaching spots. I'm gonna work with you one-on-one to create clear goals for your desk and bulletproof plan to achieve them. No more frustration at not hitting your numbers. No more self-doubt about what to do next. Just execute the plan, achieve the results you deserve. DM me, 90 day plan, and we'll send you the details. Strictly first in, best dressed. Side note, I'm so confident that you're gonna love it and you're gonna get value out of this, that I will give you 100% money back if you think otherwise. So the question that, that they posed was, you know, other than the, then access to a desired job, so other than a, you know someone seeing a job that was advertised for a recruiter, why did talent choose to work with a particular recruitment agent or agency, okay? It was a really, really, really insightful piece because what recruiters thought was valuable and the reason why talent interacted with them was completely at odds with what the uh, actual talent was saying. And I wanted to highlight this. I want to highlight this to you. I'm going to give you what it was in a minute um, because when you know what actually motivates your audience, holy shit, You can do so much more with that, right? So 30% of recruiters thought that a positive recruiter interaction, so just just a positive interaction, motivated talent the most, whereas only 8% of actual talent thought this to be the case. So recruiters thought, this was the one we thought most was going to determine whether we worked with talent again or not, which was just a positive interaction, which, I mean, yes, I mean, probably in my opinion, probably um, creates part of the equation, but it wasn't the main piece that that motivated talent, okay? So reputation, reputation. Only 9% of recruiters said reputation motivated talent, but 23% of people looking for jobs and talent said that reputation was the key factor at play. So that is super interesting. And you could probably argue, of course, that a positive interaction has something to do with reputation. But the reputation of the recruiter and the recruitment agency was the number one reason why talent chose to work with an agency um, beyond just a job brief. Now, that was super important to know because um, that gives us some real gold nuggets of, of how to essentially become more appealing to the talent we're trying to so desperately pursue day in, day out. So what I want to do um, is go into some ideas here. I mean, if you're a recruiter sitting here and you do ads and you interview candidates and you touch base with your database, fine. You're probably making placements and thinking, whatever. This isn't about just business as usual, right? You're listening to this podcast because you want to go another level, right? You're not you're not satisfied where you're at. You want to continually develop. So that's the opportunity here, right? If we know our talent is motivated by reputation. What are you doing about your reputation? So I've broken this up for you. So you've got, number one, you've got a brand level marketing, advertising awareness that needs to be at play. So if you work for an agency, that's probably out of your hands somewhat. But if you feel that your company's not marketing or branding themselves appropriately, maybe this is something that you bring to them and say, hey, we need a better um, company branding um, campaign because this is super, super important. 
I'm talking things like when your company logo is in conferences or whether they're, um, you're using branded ads on C or, or whatever. However, you're using your brand and getting it in front of as many people as possible. That's that sort of high level awareness. I think the next layer is up to you though. The next layer is about your reputation. How do we build your reputation? And again, if you're just putting ads up and you're relying on the business for, you know, maybe your company does an amazing brand awareness campaign and you're thinking, that's enough for me. I'll just do my ads. I'll do my recruiting. There's nothing more I can do. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. If you're trying to build your reputation, you've got things like Saucer, which we've heard of. Again, a bit fiddly, bit of a you know, bit of time involved. But if you can get yourself four to five star rating, that's going to feed into reputation. If you're not active on LinkedIn, i.e. posting, if you're not posting daily, every second day on LinkedIn, how is your audience seeing you? Reputation is built by tiny, tiny steps, lots of tiny, tiny steps, seeing you day in, day out, doing your thought bubbles, you know, putting some stuff out there about your market, putting some stuff out there about your clients and other competitors, putting some things out there about yourself. That helps build reputation, getting a holistic understanding of who you are, what you do and how you do it, okay? And then underneath that is commenting and engaging with your audience. That's reputation. Jeez, this person is active. This person is on the pulse. This person is everywhere. These are things you can be doing, okay? Um, podcasts, if you want to jump on podcasts, that's another way to infiltrate your audience and your market and to, again, build reputation. There are, there are many things you can do. Pretty much not doing something is a strategy and it's a terrible strategy, <laughs> okay? Someone said to me, if you don't actively focus on building your reputation and you're your decision to just sit back and not post on LinkedIn, to not really market yourself, not really get involved in your sector, well, that is your reputation. You have a reputation whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, you have a reputation, okay? A, a, a reputation of you don't exist and you barely do anything is a reputation. And is that the reputation you want? Or do you want to be seen as that recruiter who is everywhere, doing everything? And I'm telling you now, this doesn't need to be a lot of effort. It just needs to be a little bit of thought up front and popping those little activities into your calendar every single week and we can chip away at reputation. You don't create reputation overnight. You create reputation over time, okay? Little tiny steps over time. So again, that's our episode. But again, just to bring it back, recruiters thought that a positive interaction was the overwhelming you know, number one reason why talent interacted with us and our brand, where in fact, it is your reputation, okay? And that's another level on, on positivity, isn't it? But your reputation is the number one reason why talent chose to work with you and not your competitor, okay? Or chose to work with your competitor and not you because their reputation is better than yours, okay? So I'm going to leave you today. I thought it was a very powerful one. Um, if you liked anything, share it, subscribe it, comment on it. We love to hear from it. That's all we have time for you today. As always, have an amazing day. And may all your deals come true.